Welcome back to Intro to Python Skills for AI. This is episode three. And in this episode, we'll be finishing up everything we're learning about functions and then diving into how loops are a super useful tool when programming and how they avoid us having to write the same code over and over and over again. But before we jump into that, at the end of episode two, I set you a challenge. Now, in case you've forgotten, that challenge was to write a function that multiplies two numbers together, two integers, and then it prints out the value of them multiplied. Now, I'm gonna say now how I did it is potentially a bit different to how you did it. And that's fine. When programming, there isn't always one correct answer. So just because my solution might be different, it doesn't mean yours is wrong. It just means it's different. Now, sure, there are sometimes more optimized solutions and sometimes, you know, there's some clever bits of code that people write. But one really important thing when programming is that your code is readable. Like a bit of clever code's great and all, but if no one knows how to change it, if they need to, then maybe it's not such a great bit of code at all. So bear that in mind when you're kind of watching me show you my answer. Okay, so I'm gonna go into functions.py on Glitch and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just comment out as calling say hello, just because we don't actually need to call it right now. Um, like we're not using that function and we don't need to comment out it being defined since if we don't call it, nothing will happen. This is just to avoid our console getting clogged up. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a function. So I'm gonna say def for define and I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it multiply numbers just cause it's an easy name. It's obvious what it is. Yours doesn't need to be exactly the same, of course. So multiply numbers and I'm gonna take two values. I'm gonna call them X and Y, but if you called them number one and number two or anything like that, that's totally fine too. Then I'm gonna put a colon, which is saying, hey, my function's starting and press enter and our code is now indented. So cool, we're writing code inside the function. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something a little bit clever. I'm just gonna say print x times y. So now when I call multiply numbers, I say like five and 10, and I do Python functions.py, we get 50. Now, what I think many of you have probably done is created a variable called multiplied or something along those lines and said it's equal to x times y and then you've printed the value of that variable. So if I say print multiplied, and then I run this again, that totally works too, right? The reason I didn't is because we're calculating this once and then we're just kind of printing it. We don't really need it to be stored, but say it was a much bigger program and we were gonna use that value five or 10 times, then of course we would store it in a variable because that's the sensible way of doing things. So again, storing this in a variable isn't wrong, just you don't necessarily always need to. Okay, but one thing for all of these examples is we've always been printing to the console. And I don't know if you're like me, but say you're on an app or playing a game or anything like that, you're probably not doing it in the console, right? So it printing in the console is not very useful because no one's gonna see it. But how do we do anything else? Now, one thing functions can do is they can return values. So rather than printing multiplied here, I can say we're going to return multiplied and I'm gonna get rid of the brackets. So now when I run functions.py, absolutely nothing gets printed to the console, even though we're calling a function. But that's because we've not asked it to print to the console, we're just returning the value. And with that value, we can, for example, set a variable and call it my number. And we can say my number is equal to whatever this function returns. And then we can go and print my number to the console. So now when we run it, we get 50. But we can be even more clever. We can actually use functions when we're putting our parameters into a function. So we can say, instead of setting a number called my number, instead of setting the variable, we can instead just say print whatever is returned by multiply numbers, 5, 10. And so now when we run that, we get 50. Now, feel free to play around with this. It takes a little while to get your head around it, but this is a super 
useful part of programming. It's actually one of the things you'll do the most when you're building a big app. You'll create little functions that do little blocks of code and then you'll call them and they'll return a value and then you use that value to do something else elsewhere in your code. So you should know that if this is still confusing, that's normal, but you are gonna use this quite a lot. So definitely take a bit of time to play around a bit. So well done. You've learned all about functions and you've done so well with that. We're gonna dive into loops now because I think it's time to learn a bit about them. Okay, so on Glitch, head over to loops.py. It's a file in your sidebar. And you'll see there's a lot of code, which is printing a lot of stuff. So what do you think will happen when I run this in my console? Well, if I do Python loops.py, then you'll see it prints day one and then day two, all the way down to day 10. But look at this code. It's the same thing over and over again. And remember, we don't want to repeat ourselves. Imagine we wanted to change day to week or we needed to print it between day one and day 100. That would be a lot of lines of code to not really do much. And this isn't great, is it? So what do you think the better way of dealing with this is? It is, of course, loops. Loops are something we use in programming when we want to do the same task over and over and over again. A loop is a really easy way to tell your program to do that. Now, when I say the same task, that doesn't mean it needs to be the same thing. For example, we're gonna convert these print functions into a loop, but they're all a little bit different. And that's totally fine. You'll see why. We can do some quite clever things with loops. So the first thing I'm gonna go and do is get rid of all of this code. It's bad code. We don't need that bad code in our life. We can do much better than that. And I'm gonna write us a loop. Now, there's gonna be some things which you're not familiar with yet, so don't let this scare you. But I'm gonna write for number in range 10, and then put a semicolon, and then I'm gonna print day. So remember, we can do day and then we can do curly brackets. And then let's format those curly brackets with the number to get you up to speed with what's going on here. We know a loop is a loop because it starts with four. They're sometimes known as for loops because we say for every single thing in this thing, do this. Now me saying thing and thing is a bit confusing. So in this case, we're saying for every number in a range of numbers, a range of 10 numbers, right? And what range does is it just counts up and it just does it all for us. We don't need to worry about that, which is super awesome. And then when we print it, remember we can use a formatter to fill in curly brackets and number just gets whatever value in the range we are on. So say there are 10 values in the range and the loop is running for the fifth time, then it will get the fifth value in the range. And this range is just counting up one at a time for us. So I'm going to go down to our console and I'm going to do Python loops.py. And hang on, I was expecting it to do number one to 10, but it's done zero to nine. Pause the video. Why do you think it's done that? That's super strange, right? Well, actually this isn't so strange. In fact, it's a super common error to happen when programming. It's so common it even has a name. It's called an off by one error because our result was off by one. We expected it to count from one to 10, but instead it counted to zero to nine. That's not really what we're expecting. So why does this happen? Well, you know, when I ask you to count the first 10 numbers, you'll probably go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As humans, we often start counting at one. Well, computers don't computers start counting at zero. So when I tell the computer, give me a range of the first 10 numbers, it's gonna go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, this is for most programming languages anyway. Python especially always starts counting at zero, but there is a few languages which don't. So just be aware of that. 
But on the whole, when you're programming, the programming language probably starts counting at zero. You'll see in a few other episodes, this being a thing we run into. So how do I fix this? Well, I know the range function actually can take more than one parameter. So I can actually ask it to count from one. So that means actually one and count to 11 being the 11th number, which is of course 10, because it starts counting at zero. So now when I run Python loops.py, it counts one to 10. But what if I didn't know the intricacies of how the range function worked? Surely I'm not expected to know that off by heart, right? Well, remember how I mentioned you can Google stuff when coding? This is exactly one of those times. If I open a new tab and go to Google, and I Google Python range function, it'll give us a ton of results. You'll see there's a Python docs, there's various websites. I'm just gonna click the top result. Often that does the job, you don't always have to. And you'll see here, it gives me a syntax saying the range, it takes the parameters of start, stop, and step. And the only actually required parameter is stop. So when we typed in 10, it was stopping after it had counted up 10 times. But since we've instead put one and 11, well, it starts counting at one and stops at position 11, which is of course the number 10. Now, obviously you're gonna use a range function, but that's not the real reason why I'm teaching you this. The real reason is because you should always, if you're ever stuck, go and look at documentation, whether that's a tutorial such as this one, whether that's the Python docs, whether that's just a website which contains some useful information. There's nothing wrong with Googling and there's nothing wrong with looking at the documentation. In fact, all programmers use documentation to help them code. So know that if you ever get stuck, there's nothing wrong with going to have a look. Okay, well done. We're gonna leave this episode here and in the next episode, we're gonna learn all about lists and imports. I think with these programming skills in our arsenal, we'll be ready to kind of move on to some much bigger programs very, very soon. So thanks for watching and I will see you in episode four.